Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Akim, of course, call Haloyim, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechachodash. The honor to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone that rule and teach well. Peace and Shalom to the Akim out there and the elect, which consists of the men, women, and children selected to make it out of here from the coming nuclear destruction, all right? I'm the brothers of Yana out of the DC camp coming at you with another keep in mind. I'm going to call it, um, keep in mind, yes, the, um, the covenant was passed down to physical Israel, okay? The covenant of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob was still passed down to physical Israel, okay? There's no such thing as a spiritual Israel, although you can be a spiritual Israelite, all right? As far as, you know, not being carnal, being more spiritual, that's by having faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, but there's no such thing as another nation can be a spiritual Israelite. So yes, the covenant was still passed down, what, to physical Israel, the seed, okay? Also, in addition to that title, I add, in uh, the mother of nations, all right? And what about the mother of nations? Because I went into that before, but I'll touch upon it again. You know, I, um, there was a brother, another brother in the camp. As a matter of fact, uh, the brother to the left right here, a beautiful brother, Shamaria, we were talking, and he's, he's going to do a, a beautiful lesson and Lord willing, once he puts his lesson up, I'll, you know, download his lesson and put it up on my channel. All right, because he does a lot of good videos, all right? And we were talking about, you know, doing a video uh, about this covenant, you know, who the covenant is given to. Now, this is just before I came up to the camp. You know, uh, brothers was going in. They was going back and forth with this um, this church pastor. All right, but without further ado, let me go ahead and play, um, you know, some of the clip. And then we're going to get scriptures like we do. All right, but just keep this in mind. Keep keep this in your mind that, yes, the covenant was still given to what? To physical Israel, okay? And what about the mother of nations? All right? The promise is made and yeah. it's seed. Yeah. This is not something that someone can just start to believe. It's to his seed. Yes, uh, is seed only physical blood yeah. or spiritual seed? No, no. no. How yeah. do you not? And, that, and that's where these church pastors get wrong. They... they they get the fact that they don't know that Israel can be a spiritual people and Israel can be a wicked and carnal people. All right, the Lord wants us to be more spiritual. All right, we come back to the Lord and we must worship him, as the scripture says, what? In spirit and in truth. Those are the Israelites that's going to what? Make it this go around. Everybody that's carnal within Israel is not going to make it. That's the difference, man. Remember with, with um, let me get this scripture. Remember what um, John the Baptist said, right? I didn't mean to put that. Let me see. All right, Matthew the third chapter says the preaching of John the Baptist, right? This is um, Matthew three, and verse five. It says, "Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins." All right. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, which, you know, you can't deny that the Pharisees and Sadducees, you can't say that they're not Israelites. They were Israelites, okay? And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He called them a generation of vipers because you have wicked people within Israel. You have scribes and Pharisees that... You know, they constantly taught, you know, the law, but they themselves wasn't doing it. You see, they themselves were doing wicked practices. All right. It's, he said, what? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Bring forth, therefore, workings fit for forgiveness. Okay. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, because guess what? The scribes, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. They physically go back to Abraham. What? Through Jacob, then Isaac, then straight to Abraham. Okay? So think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. All right? Just because we're Israelites and we have Abraham to our father doesn't mean that we're going to get the uh, the covenant. Okay? Well, we're ultimately going to get the covenant through the elect. But I'm talking about um, just because you have Abraham to your father doesn't mean you're going to be delivered. Okay? You have to bring forth, therefore, fruits of your workings that meet fitting for repentance, for forgiveness. Being an Israelite is not enough. You have to be a spiritual 
Israelite. You have to be an Israelite first, but you have to have faith. That's what it is. You see, Abraham, he was a son of God. He was one of the sons of God in lineage. He's a Hebrew, but he was also one of the sons of God. He came back to Yahweh Shai in faith. That's the key. He was still of that lineage, the sons of God, but he had to come back to the Father in faith. Abraham was not any of the other nations, because you had the other nations around during that time. From Noah all the way down to Abraham, it was a lot of population going on. Remember, at one point, Abraham was traveling with Sarah, and you had King Abimelech that wanted, he, he said, Sarah, look, you're going to have to say you're my sister, because if not, they're going to they're kill me and take you. All right? Because they're going to find you attractive, basically, and they're going to kill me and take you. That shows you how much population was going on back then, all the way up to the time of Abraham. From his three sons, Ham, Ham Shem, and Japheth, Selachia, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, from his three sons and their, th and their uh, three wives collectively, they've had many offspring, and they were populating the earth, and it was just repopulating, repopulating. Think about it. Once again, you had a man who wanted to possibly put, uh, um, possibly put uh, Abraham to death, because of his wife Sarah. Shows you how much population was going on. But guess what? Abraham was of the lineage of the sons of God. And guess what? He came back to the Heavenly Father with faith. That's why I like to say, our forefathers are a representation of the body of the elect. All right? Because guess what? You, the, the Lord called Abraham, and Abraham had faith. The Abraham's uh, um, forefathers and lineage on up they were worshiping uh, up false idols and false gods. See? The Lord wasn't dealing with them. He was dealing with Abraham because he saw something in Abraham. And then Abraham followed the calling and have faith in Yahweh Hashem But we're going to get the scriptures. It says, And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that the Most High is able of these stones to raise up what children unto Abraham. All right? Because the Lord don't need you. He don't need us. Okay, he's able to raise up stones to raise up, uh, to be children of uh, Abraham. All right? Let me see. Because then it'll get to Yahweh Shai. Okay? Well, I'll just read it. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. If we're Israelites and we don't bring forth good fruit through the spirit of Yahweh Shai, we will be destroyed. That's why what he told the scribes and Pharisees, think, he said, what? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. If we don't bring forth fruits meet for repentance, we can be destroyed. We will be destroyed. All right? It says, verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. All right? Because it was symbolizing of, you know, washing of the filth. When he baptized the Israelites in water, it was symbolic of what? Washing the filth away. But does water actually take away the sins that a man does? No, absolutely not. It's the person's mind, his conscience that takes away the sins when he repents, you know, and Yahweh Shemel Shai forgives that man. That's what washes that man, okay? I, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, talking about Yahweh Shai, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit all right, end with fire, these words, the Holy Spirit, all right, end with fire, trials and tribulations, okay, that's how the Lord is going, temptation, all right, that's how the Lord is going to, what, baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, these trials, okay, with, with proving us, that's how we are going to be made clean, you see that, all right, but I just wanted to read that too, all right, but I wanted to get the other part, is that um, the scribes and Pharisees, they were still Israelites, okay? And just because you physically have Abraham doesn't mean that's going to save you, okay? You have to bring forth fruits, meat to repentance. That's why we come out there week in and week out, and we tell the people what? Isaiah 58, 1 style, style, you know? We lift up our voice like a trumpet, and we shoot our people their transgressions. Why? So they can return to the Lord, all right, with truth and sincerity. All right, let me go ahead and play this uh, this video again. I'm not telling you. What's the spirit? What's the spirit you see? Yeah. 
Right. Well, no, no. We talking about if you go into that word seed right there. Yeah. That's talking about a physical yeah. seed. Yeah. You know, so we can get it if you want. Yeah. Because heaven us, we have spiritual sons. Yeah, but that's cool. But don't add to the scriptures. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My man, my yeah. man. Don't add to the scriptures though, because we we specifically asking about that scripture right there. Yeah. Right. And, and another thing that made me want to do this video too is uh, the elder Yashawamba, Remnant Save 144. He said, Isaac, fam, because that's the seed. After Abraham, it was Isaac, and then after Isaac, it was Jacob. You can't get around that. When did it get changed from Jacob and the 12 tribes to everybody? When did it say that the covenant that was the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant was given to everybody else? You have to show me that in the scriptures. You have to show me where the covenant of the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was given to everybody else. And they won't be able to do it because it wasn't. Uh, the, the elder said, can't wait for the day we get rest from having to explain this. It's simple and plain, right? Just what the brothers were saying, when you go to Romans 9, okay, and we keep bringing this out, and this is such a cut for everybody, man, all right? Romans 9 and 1, solicitude for Israel. Not It doesn't say spiritual Israel, a people that can be spiritual Israelites, okay? Even though Israelites can be spiritual, it's no such thing as a spiritual Israelite. An Israelite can be spiritual once again, but it's no such thing as a spiritual Israelite, meaning from another nation, and they get just poof, I'm a spiritual Israelite. If, if that's the case, what tribe did? So Moabite's just going to say, I'm, I'm an Israelite of the tribe of, uh, he's just going to say I'm from the tribe of Manasseh, but he's an actual Moabite. Because if you're going to say you're an Israelite, okay, fine, what tribe then? You see, you, see, you see the foolishness there? This is Romans 9 and 1. I say the truth in Hamashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. This is Paul speaking to his brethren, to his kinsmen according to the flesh. I wonder, I wonder what it says here. This is the inner linear. I wonder what it says here. Bear with me. I got this, uh, let me see, uh, according to the flesh. Tools. It's a lot because I have it kind of, um, half the screen like this. I'm the other half, I'm, you know, on the program. So let me go down to Bibles. Okay. You know what the KJV says already. What does the NLT say? For my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. Wow. Really, is no ish there. It's really Jews or Israelites. But we get what this is trying to say. For my people, it says my Jewish brothers and sisters. So where's the other nations in that? It says, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Yahweh Shai, if that would save them. You see that? You said my Jewish brothers, right? Let's go back. All right. So that's where it says my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, my Jewish brothers, my Israelite brothers, right? All right. Verse four, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, okay, being brought back, all right, to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, because we were once casted off, we were casted out of the land of Israel. He turned his back on us. But guess what? Through Yahweh Shai, we have that adoption to get back to him. Okay? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory. And it says, in the covenants. Covenants. Okay? We were the ones that made a covenant with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And said, all that he said, we will do. All right? And then guess what? Later on, he said that I'm going to give them a new covenant. Because they were too weak in the flesh to uh, keep the other covenant, the first covenant. You see? It says, in the giving of the law, who was given to Israelites? In the service of the Most High, the service of Yahweh Hashem Shah, the priest was given to the Israelites. It says, in the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, who is over all, Yahweh Hashem Shah, blessed forever, Amon. You see that? Straight up. Now, this is another one where they get hung up on. It says, not as though the word of Yahweh have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. 
All right, yeah, they're not all Israel, which are of Israel, because you have our people that are wicked. You see that? You have, you have just because they're Israelites, guess what? The, the Heavenly Father requires that we obey, that we worship. Yahweh Shemel Shai in truth and sincerity. That's what Yahweh Shemel Shai requires of us. So just because you're an Israelite, guess what? You have to be what? A spiritual Israelite. Like I said before, an Israelite that would, that's more spiritual. That's what the Lord is looking for, right? Because that Israelite is going to obey rather than just sacrifice. He's going to listen. He's going to fear. All right, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Right? Because guess what? You had uh, different sons out of Abraham. Of course, Abraham had Ishmael. Okay? But he also had Isaac. And then he had six other sons by Keturah. Right? So it says, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Just because you're the seed doesn't mean you're the chosen children. It says, but, it says, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See? In Isaac. Because after Isaac, who was after Isaac? It was Jacob. And then after Jacob, it was the 12 tribes. You cannot get around that. You see that? So lock it for that. It says, um, it says, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Yes, the children of the promise, the ones that have faith, but are still that lineage. The ones that have faith, though, but are still of that lineage, those are the children of the promise. All right. Now I'm going to go down to, um, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to go down. I'm calling, I'm calling back. I'm going to go down. And it says, um, yeah, Esau, yeah, as it's written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Put this on Salaki, y'all. I'm gonna put this on um Do Not Disturb. You know how it is. As soon as you want to do a um a video, that's when you get calls, alright? So this is uh, Romans. You see. We gotta get this. It's seven through thirteen. I think I already read the point. I'll keep reading. I'll keep reading. It says, um, for this is the verse nine. It says, um, for this is the word of promise at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Yeah, yeah, this is the point. Sarah shall have a son. Because after Sarah had a son, it was Isaac. That's the only son she had. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. See, it went through Isaac and Rebecca now. It says, uh, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So after, e uh, after Isaac, it went to Jacob. See? All right? It went to Jacob, which we read of earlier, who are Israelites. Plain and simple, man. All right, let me go back to uh, the video. Let's see if I can pull some more. And it's talking about a physical season. And he's going to get the actual Did word. Did you say physical season? He's going to get the actual season? word. Yeah. You're reading English. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about the origin of the language. Yeah. I, I know. That's what right. it is. It's yeah. sperma. So what's, it's, go ahead, get that. It, it's sperma in the Greek. That's what it is. And it's, um, this is the strong definition. Sperma. It says seed, including the male sperm. Uh -huh. By implication, offspring specifically a ring okay yes. figuratively uh as it became over a complaint it's an offspring who's commentary who wrote that commentary it's a strong definition yes. this is that commentary but this is no it's, it's a definition who, of the word the, the, word, the word was actually who, sperm who, wrote, who wrote that definition what do you mean no, that, that, what it's important written? because we have to go to the source what's that beautiful because now you got church pastors now now we bring in our words and the definition of the hebrew words which I think later on, he says, I know the Hebrew. Or earlier, one of the times he said in there, I know the Hebrew. He said it out of his mouth on the camera. All right. But now, now that we're bringing out the definitions to these words, well, who wrote that definition? Who wrote that? Because it's important. Right. But that's the thing. Even when without the definition, we can still break down that it's for Israel. Okay. 
that, let's play with that. That's not use the definition, right? That's not use sperma. Let's go to Genesis 28, right? This is Genesis 28 and 10, Jacob's dream. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went to Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones out of that place and put them for his pillows and laid down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of the Most High ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord power, Yahweh power of Abraham thy father, okay? And the power of Isaac, okay? Yeah, Abraham his forefather, because obviously Jacob wasn't the son of Abraham, but that was his grandson. You see, Jacob was Abraham's grandson. It says, Abraham thy father, and the power of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it into thy seed. So right there, let you know, is given to Jacob, but then after Jacob, to Israel, to his seed. That's a breakdown of the scripture without using the word. The scripture does, the definition of the word, seed or sperma, as the brother brought out earlier. All right? We can use the scriptures to break down the scriptures. We go into the words for further edification. All right? Because the scriptures already told us to do precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. But we study to show ourselves approved. We study and we give answers to the elect. And we go further than just looking up scriptures. We go into the word. We go into the Hebrew. Right? But doesn't mean we can't break down the scriptures without the definitions. We can do that. Right? Like I always say, it's two, it's two things. There's the word definition and there's the scripture definition. The word definition does help us. We do use the word definition. But the scriptural definition is more important. All right? It's always going to be like that. So if he wants to say, what about the scriptures? We can, we're using the scriptures. That's all we have been doing. But guess what? You people can't see that because you have this love for everybody demon on you. Like the Lord just loves everybody. You see? All right? The Lord is jacking up people right now put, with this monkey nigga that's running around. He's jacking up people. You see? All right? It says, um... And to thy seed, to thee will I give it, to Jacob, and to thy seed, the Israelites. Verse 14, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now it's funny, because when they read this, a lot of times they think about the other one when it's given to Abraham. He said, in Abraham... And in thy seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. But it wasn't just said to Abraham. It was said to Isaac and then reiterated right here in verse 14. He said to Jacob, and in thy seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. All right. And I was talking about the Israelites because the Israelites were going to be scattered amongst the nations. And when they uh, come back to the Lord in faith, that's a blessing. Because Israel is going to be scattered all over amongst other heathen and other nations. And for us to be scattered amongst the heathen and still believe on the power that we have lost, that's a blessing. That is a blessing, man. See, it's never given to the other nations. It was the fact that we were scattered and that even being scattered, we were able to come back to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai in faith. That's why. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Because we got a way to come back to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai being in a heathen state of mind around other nations, man. See? But see, you know, these Christians would never get that. All right? They would never get that. You see? Let me play a little bit more. This is Galatians chapter 3 or 16. It says, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now, that's a fact because you just said it went from Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. That's his seed. That's and, we, and we just, you know, in land backing off the brothers, we just read it in Genesis 28. He literally said the same covenant, right, to Abraham. He said it to Isaac, and then he said it to Jacob. The same exact one as we just read in Genesis, the 28th chapter right here. 
So where's this spiritual seed like anybody? It's not there, man. It's not there. You see? His son and Jake and Isaac passed it to his son. So that's talking about a physical seed. You just said it. Now you want to come up with something different that the scripture didn't say. All right, keep going. And that's another thing. Abraham, Abraham was of the sons of God, and he had an offspring, okay, Isaac, who it went to. And after Isaac, it went to Jacob, which was his offspring. And then after Jacob, it went to the Israelites, their offspring. Now, it's funny because they keep saying, you know, it's, you can be a spiritual Israelite of the other nations. But wait a minute, when you look at the pattern, it came from the offspring of another man. So who did the Israelites have as offspring that was another nation? Who would get the covenant? That's another aspect you can think about it as. Okay, okay, if, if it went to everybody, then it's supposed to go through lineage, right? But when you look at the pattern, it went from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israelites. So if it's to go to anybody else, it would have to go through a lineage. So what other people did Israelites have come through their lineage that the covenant went to? Show me that in the scriptures, man. All right, as you can see the pattern, it went by lineage. And we're going to get this scripture on that. This is um, Sirach 44 and verse 19, right? It says, Abraham was a great father of many people. In glory was there none like unto him, who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in his flesh. And when he was proved and tested, he was found faithful, right? He was about to sacrifice his only son Isaac that he loved. When I say only, I mean the chosen, okay? Because obviously he had other sons. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he will bless the nations in his seed and that he will multiply him as the dust of the earth. Now, remember that was given to Jacob that we read earlier in Genesis 28, the same one, all right? So that seed that's multiplied as the dust of the earth is still talking about Israel. And exalt his seed as the stars and cause them to inherit from sea to sea, and from river unto the utmost part of the land. With Isaac did he establish likewise, for Abraham his father's sake, the blessing of all men in the covenant, and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing, and gave him an heritage, all right, the land, and divided his portions among the twelve tribes did he part them. So where... Show me afterwards the other nation, another nation of people that came after uh, after the Israelites who the covenant went to. Remember, it's going by a lineage thing. You're not going to be able to find it because who comes out of Israelites? Other Israelites, not other nations, man. It's just a cold cut all the way over. You see? And we're getting scriptures to back up the scriptures. We don't have to go into the words, although we do it for further edification, man. Right? He said not into seeds as of many, but oh, as of yeah, one. I just want to add the point how many sons did Abraham have? That's a good question. Yes, man. Yes, and the seed is going to about the physical seed. And yet, see? See? You ask a Christian pastor or any of these Christians something that goes over their head. The brother just asked him plainly, how many sons did Abraham have? Yes, yes, the seed didn't answer it. That's why whenever they come up, we got to stay, we got a zero on their ass, man. When they try to uh, run, no, 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 I don't care about what else you said. We stay on this point until, and, and then after we get this point, then we move it on, man. You see that? Because that gets these cats when you zero in on them, man. You see? But this yeah, is exactly. This is the yeah, context. Right still here. didn't, still didn't answer the question. He du he duck and dodged and slipped that man. You see, and we we gotta see that and stay and zero in on their ass when they try to do that, man. Yeah, that's what you're speaking about. Yeah. He had seven sons, so but there was only two people on that scripture. Galatians chapter three verse six. And I don't know what the brother meant. You know, he had uh, eight other sons. I mean, uh, eight sons total. You know, he had seven other sons outside of uh, 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 Isaac. You see? Now to Abraham and his seed for the promise is made. He said not and to seed as of many. Because he had multiple sons, right? Go ahead. But as of one and to thy seed, which is the Mashiach. And Christ was locked. But he gave through that lot. Yeah. 
He came through the, the nation of Israel. Man. Deuteronomy 15, verse 9. And that's another thing because he's talking about get this, get that, get this, but yet he don't want to go on his phone and pull out the scriptures and find it. If you know the scriptures, you you bring out the scriptures and find it then. All right? But since he wants to keep jumping and, and, and ducking and dodging that, let's go back to Genesis, right? Let's go back to Genesis because the second part of my uh, the title, but just keep in mind, other than... um. Yet the covenant being passed through physical Israel, I put, what, what about the mother of nations? All right? Or I'll just title it the mother of nations. Now you have what we read earlier, Genesis 17. Okay? It's Genesis 17 and 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, 99, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty power, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and, and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and the Most High talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And they'll use this father of many nations, talking about anybody who believes in him is the son of Abraham. All right? Anybody believes in Yahweh Shai, because, you know, they go into the New Testament, anybody that believes in Yahweh Shai is the son of Abraham, which that's true, when it comes to Israelites, anybody among Israel who believes in Yahweh Shai is that son of Abraham, a son of the promise, the son of the covenant. Okay? It says, verse 5, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Right? Many nations, why? Because after Jacob, he had the 12 tribes, and those were multitudes, man. All right? Those were multitudes. You see? It says, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Is that still talking about Israel? And I'm, I'm, guess what? Let me keep going. Verse 7, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for an everlasting covenant. For an everlasting covenant, to be a power unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, in all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their power. So what you're telling me is that the other nations are going to poof, be, be saved and delivered with Israel as long as they believe in the Lord, and they're going to possess the land of Israel. Show me where the other nations got um, the covenant to go to the land of Canaan, a.k.a. the land of Israel. Show me that, that they were going to make it and be blessed with the land of Israel. Show me. They always talking. Show us in the scriptures. Show us. Show me that in the Bible where the other nations were going to inherit the blessing and the covenant and be in the land of Israel. See? We were once in that land and we got casted out and guess what? We're going to be brought back better. See? We're going to be brought back better than we ever had before. Show me the other nations where they're going to be brought back to a land where they never were. You see that? The land of Israel. And it's called the land of Israel for a reason. See? All right? It says, um, verse 9, And Elohim said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Where was that covenant given to the other nations, man? All right. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall, shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, because you have Israelites, okay? You have Israelites later on in the laws that had what? They had servants of other Israelites. All right? Either way, you have to be circumcised. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. In the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. 
he have broken my covenant, which shows you this, this covenant is like we read earlier, even though it's saying bought with money and everything, it's all talking about with Israel. Because if a an actual heathen would not keep that law and get his uh, and not get his rod circumcised, you you saying so the Lord is going to cut him off from his people? No, this is being cut off from the people of Israel, man. You see, all right? Because remember, Abraham was the sons of God. He's of the same lineage of Israel. You see, this was for Abraham, and then it went to Isaac, then it went to Jacob, then it went to uh, the twelve tribes, man. You see. It says, um, verse 15, And Elohim said unto Abraham, As for, and here's the point, this, this is the mother of nations point. This is verse 15, And Elohim said unto Abraham, And Elohim were the angels, And they always spoke on behalf of the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father spoke through the angels. Said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, But Sarah, shall her name be so abram got changed to abraham and then sarai got changed to who sarah it says verse 16 and i will bless her and give thee a son also of her all right and the only son that she had was isaac yea i will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations kings of people shall be of her how is that possible when she only had one son that's possible because after Isaac was in Isaac shall thy seed be called after Isaac it went to Jacob and then the tribes which the tribes have what the kings okay the kings that was the multitude of nations that was the multitude of peoples it was it was through Jacob and what the 12 tribes see so you have the father of many nations now you have the mother of many nations and it's talking about the same people. That means it must have went through Isaac. Not Ishmael, not the other sons of Keturah, not anybody else, obviously, but some people believe that. It went through who? Isaac, and then Jacob, and then the Israelites. That's a cut. You have the father of many nations, you have the mother of many nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Because he was ninety-nine. He says, and Sarah, he says, um, you know, so basically he was about a hundred. You see? You know? He said, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? You know, Israel, we round up, you know? He's about a hundred. Probably ninety-nine, you know, years old and some months close to, you know? And shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear? He has Sarah for, um, you know, almost about 10 years. You see? All right, because for this to be made true in Genesis 17, all right, that um, for her to be a mother of nations, that means she would have to bear forth a son that she didn't have before. And that son that she bore was Isaac. All right? Then Jacob, later on, through Isaac and Rebekah, all right? Then guess what? The 12 tribes. It's a cut, man. It's a cut. All right? You see? That's why the scripture says, Study to show thyself approved. And this guy says he's a pastor. Got a bald-ass head, which you can see he shaves. A bald-ass face, and he shaves. Where's that in the scriptures? The scripture is a man you're supposed to keep your beard if you can grow one. You see that? These people got a lot to learn, but instead they, you know, they come up and they do a lot of talking. Well, we'll see who's going to be doing the talking when all hell breaks loose, man. Because we're trying to warn you. It's for the Israelites, so we need to get right. Forget about the other nations, man. All right? Like the, like the elder brother said, can't wait for the day we get rushed from having to explain this. Because at the end of the day, like Apostle Hart said a long time, going back and forth with these people, at the end of the day, we'll see. We'll see. Once it happens... The water you have by Shimon Hashai, because I, I told you so, it's going to be beautiful, man. All right? Call Haloyim, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashir, Chakwadash, and as always, to the elect, double shalom.